And so the very first time that they do that, the instruments began to play. It's, it's a big ceremony. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar is there. Uh, and, and people start bowing down whenever they hear the, uh, the instruments playing. Uh, and, and it's not long until it's real obvious that three men are not bowing down. I mean, three men are not bowing down. And so they, they bring word to the king, and they say, we got three of these. And, and Nebuchadnezzar knew who these guys were. I mean, they, they were extremely intelligent. They were blessed by God. And, and he even used them uh, within his inner circle of, of government because of, of, of the talents that they had and the way that God had blessed them. And he acknowledges that. But now they, they have violated, I mean, just a, a very public affront to Nebuchadnezzar, and they have not bowed down to this idol. And, and Nebuchadnezzar asked them, said, did, did you all understand? You know, is there, is there a language barrier here? Are, are we communicating? Uh, do, do you understand what we said? That whenever the, the music plays, you're to bow down to, to this and worship this idol as God. Uh, and, and they say, yes, we understand. He said, but do you, do you realize what will happen if you don't? And there's a fiery furnace over here that's already burning, and it's ready to, to, to throw anybody in, into that furnace uh, to be burned alive if, if they don't bow down. And, and these young men, it, 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 to me, it's, it's impressive. A life lesson, a life lesson that, that we as adults need to learn uh, and, and be careful with and, and then be sure to teach it to our children. These young men, e even though you could not... Uh, they could not have been any further away spiritually than where Nebuchadnezzar was. Even though Nebuchadnezzar is a scoundrel and even though he's, he's promoting uh, worship of idols, these young men were not disrespectful. There is never a reason to be disrespectful. There's never to be a reason. There, there is never a reason to be disrespectful. Do uh, you, you remember when... Uh, when, when uh, when, when Saul reacted in, in Jerusalem, uh, and, and he didn't know that he's speaking to the high priest. You know, there have been a lot of changes going on. Uh, and and, and he, th this man who is judging him very critically and, and putting, uh, putting down the, uh, uh, the life of, of Christians, and, and Saul calls him uh, a, a, a whitewashed sepulcher. And, and uh, you know, you know who, who do you think you are to be talking this way? Uh, and... and uh, one of the, the, the guards, one of the servants there, the high priest, uh, he, he says, uh, how, in the, how in the world do you talk to this man this way? No one speaks to the high priest this way. You know, and th those are instructions from God. And, and, and Paul immediately he goes, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that you were the high priest. I, I, I really didn't. I didn't realize. I would have never said that. To, to you. Because even though he is, is not following the, the Jewish faith anymore, he still has respect for the truth of God and the instructions that God's given. It, it's so important. It's so important. But these young men say, say to Nebuchadnezzar, they say, O King Nebuchadnezzar, very respectful, that our God is able to save us from that fiery furnace if he chooses to. But whether he chooses to or not, we still will not bow down to your idol. The things are pretty bad there. So da Daniel, and of course you know that they got thrown into the fire and, 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 and God was with them and Nebuchadnezzar looks in and, and, and uh, he says, I thought we only threw three men in. There's, there's four, uh, I see four and one appears uh, to be the son of God. So, you know, what, what's, uh, what's going on here? Uh, and, but, but Daniel is, is afraid and, and he prays to God and he says, please, please, please God forgive us because we're doing the same thing. Now he wasn't doing it. He wasn't doing it, but he's identifying with the sins of the people. It doesn't mean that he embraces their sin, but he certainly understands what's going on. And he goes to the only one that is able to deal with that. And he goes to God. He said, please, 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 God, don't extend our stay here another 70 years. I look out among the people, and, and, and we are, are no different today, 70 years later, than we were whenever you sent Nebuchadnezzar to, to take us captive in a beautiful prayer. But Daniel, identifying with the sins of the people. Uh, th this, is, this is so important uh, that we see this in our relationship uh, with God, uh, that, that we, how is it that we say it? We hate the sin, but we love the people. We hate the sin, but we love the people. 
And God tells us in, in Romans chapter 5 that, that uh, within the body of Christ, if you have someone that, that is blatantly rebelling against God and living in sin, like the young man who was living with his father's wife, uh, Paul or God, we don't say that enough. We, we say Paul or, 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 or Moses, or, but it's actually God speaking through Paul. And, and he, he says, if, if a brother acts that way, you withdraw yourself from him. He said, now, I'm not talking about the whole world. If, if, if a, a worldly person out here uh, is, is acting that way, certainly you should be able to understand. But, but those who are in the body of Christ, we, don't, we cannot tolerate that. We, we cannot allow that or, or embrace that. And, now, and, and they got the message. They got the message, and, and, uh, and, and they dealt with it. But we need to be really careful here. Uh, in Ezra chapter 9, verses 5 through 15, they came up with a plan for dealing with the sin. I mean, while, while, Ezra, while Ezra is sitting here, they, they come up with a plan to deal with the sin. And they say, what we're going to do is, is we're going to call all of, all of the men of Israel in. We're going to to these uh, foreign families uh, and, and we're going to insist that they repent of it. Uh, and uh, Ezra said, that's a good plan. That's a good plan. Call all the people together. And, and w one of the interesting things uh, whenever they began to implement this plan is the people have sat there and listened uh, as, as Ezra is, is uh, uh, reviewing with them uh, the law of God. Uh, and, and it's a cold, rainy, downpour day. I mean, it is just cold in and, and the rain, and, uh, and it uh, says so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to identify the sin in the lives of the people. And if you want to know how to identify the sins in the lives of people, uh, this, this book is a place to go. Because this book tells us everything that we need to know that pertains to living life as a Christian. To be, be careful with this. Be careful with this. It tells us about the good things we need to do. It tells us about the bad things we need to avoid. And anytime God says something, it should get our attention. And, 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 and their response in chapter 9 and verse 10, uh, we have forsaken thy commandments, is what Ezra is saying. And, and they certainly have. They certainly have. And, and what, what they have a tendency to do is exactly what Solomon ended up doing. Uh, when, when God warned him, uh, warned all the people of God, uh, about in the book of Deuteronomy about there's going to come a time whenever you'll want a king and 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 eventually you will have a king uh, and and but 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 this man is 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 going to get caught up uh, he he's going to want many many wives and and he's going he's going to make these alliances and he's going to there's going to be all these political marriages uh, and these women are going to have a, a tremendous influence on on these men as as they build bigger palaces and, and stables and, and, and the splendor of, of King Solomon's reign uh, was, was uh, amazing. But his wives turned his heart away from God. And Jesus dealt with that when he was here in Matthew chapter 15. He said the, the problem was is, is even the leaders of, of Israel at that time, the people that were going to church at that time, because the Jewish nation in, in uh, temple worship was, was the church of the Old Testament. Those, the things that they were hearing in their assembly well, was not just what God had said, but they were teaching for commandments the what? The doctrines of men. They had, had mixed together their own ideas along with the Word of God and, and passing on their judgments. And, and Jesus said this is a real problem. And, and what ends up happening is He says your worship is in vain. Your worship is in vain. You have not accomplished what you had wanted to worship. In James chapter 4, in verse 4, uh, God, God tells us that, uh, that uh, well, we're not to be friends of the world. We're, we're not to be friends to the world. And we need, we need to guard our life and guard our influence and guard our relationship. Uh, he said friendship with the world is, is enmity with God. You become an enemy of God if you have become a friend of the world. Neither the things that are in the world. 
For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the, and, and the vain glory or the pride of life. And the world's going to come to an end. And those that live that way are also going to come to an end. But the one who does the will of the Father will live forever. That's powerful. Love not the world. Sensual, sexual overtones in so many sins that men commit. That's exactly the way that, that uh, Balak was eventually, and Moab was eventually able to, uh, to uh, uh, overcome a, a lot of Israel. He could not get Balaam to curse God. God would not allow, or he could not get Balaam to curse the people of God. God would not allow that to happen. But he came up with a, with a, a secondary plan. He fell back. Th this would have been a great plan if it worked for him, but it didn't work. And so he falls back on another one. He sends, while he's having meetings with, with Israel, while, while they're interacting, and, and, and that's, that's what Zerubbabel wouldn't allow the people to, to do. You remember uh, earlier in the book of Ezra when, uh, when they start... Uh, rebuilding, laying the foundation that, uh, that some of the, uh, the inhabitants of the land, they come up and they say, let us help you. Let, let us help you. You know, we, we can work together on this. After all, we all believe the same thing. We're all going to the same place. I can, I can hear it. You know, we all want to be pleasing to God. You know, but, let, let, you know because we're, it's almost like they're saying we're brothers. And, and Zerubbabel said, no. Nope. He said, in, in fact, we have nothing in common. Oh, man. He says, we have nothing in common. Because he knew exactly what they were trying to do. They are trying to, to side up to these people, become friends with these people, and then they're going to have an evil influence on them. And it happens. It's, it's a plan of Satan, and it works so very effectively. And in the lives of the people of Ezra's day, uh, it, was, it was working very well. Love not the world. Number two, what sin does to people. Number one, you've got to identify sin. And the only place you can really identify sin is in the Scripture. Not just asking people's opinion, but going to the Scripture. Have you been noticing some of the things they have said about the godly, the godly things that some political people are involved in? I, I remember back when, uh, when uh, uh, President uh, Reagan uh, was, was president, uh, and and not, not, that I, not that I approved of, uh, of his divorce or, or his, uh, his marriage to, to Nancy, and, and I really don't know anything about it. Uh, but I do know that he, he was married again. But, but I wrote a note uh, to, to President Reagan, and, and I thanked him. I thanked him, not for the way he voted uh, or, or what he was pushing in, in, in our, our, our lives or in our government, but I thanked him for treating his wife with respect in public. And I said, I, I would assume that, that that's your practice all of the time because I, I don't see uh, any glitches there. I, I wrote a, a, a letter uh, to Nancy Reagan. And, and because the, the press was saying such horrible things. You know, uh, they, they were saying, you know, women don't act like that in the day of enlightenment. Because every time she's there when her, her husband was speaking, she is just focused so much on him. And, and the, the, the displaying it. And she was being ripped apart. And I wrote to her, and I said, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Because I've got two teenage daughters. And I'm glad that they can see a woman, the first lady, showing undying respect to her husband. I got a note back from her. She typed it on, on, a, on a, a postcard. And, and I thought, first of all, I start to read it. I'm, I'm going, well, interesting. You know, why, why would you just send a postcard? And, and, and then I, I look down at the, the signature line. Of course, it's got her name there. She printed her name. She cannot write cursive. She was dyslexic. Her N's were backwards. And her C was backwards. And it wasn't on an exact straight line. It looked like 
maybe a first or second grader in school had done it. And I thought, what effort she put into that to send that back to me? I don't know our vice president. And you know I don't get political. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the politics involved. I don't know our vice president. But I'm thankful that as a nation, we have a man in that office who shows respect to his wife and to the uh, marriage vows that he's taken. He says, no, there's not going to be any question about what's going on. He said, I will not have a private meal with another woman. I will not do that. Makes no difference what else is going on. Makes no difference how important that may seem to somebody. My wife will be with me. He said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And, and because of relationship and, and, and reputation, the character, he, he said, I will not attend any kind of function where alcohol is being served without my wife by my side. I'm going, thank you. Thank you. This is a big one. This is a big one. Don't, don't let... Don't let the world run over us on this. Don't let the world press you into its mold. What sin does to people. Ezra, as we mentioned, mentions four times in his prayer to God that we are a remnant. We're not even the whole nation. Most of the nation is still over there in Babylon. We're we're just a remnant that you have brought back here. And they're so thankful that God has done this. He says that, that we are... We are slaves to you, Father. We, we have been in slavery. We have been taken as slaves. But, but now we're, we're your slaves, and, and, and we've, we have been held in bondage, but, but now we want to be held by you. That's exactly what Jesus did. That's the prophecy that, that, that God had made about, about Jesus uh, when, whenever uh, in, in the book of Hebrews, in, I think it's is it chapter 7 or chapter 10, uh, where, where he said... Uh, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. He said, I come to do thy will, O God. A body thou hast prepared for me. What literally, what literally it means, I've got two minutes to tell you what that means. It, it means that, that Jesus was saying, uh, using a reference to a practice that, that the Jewish people did. If, if you were a bond servant... It means that you could have been free, but you have committed yourself to serve this person for the rest of your life. And and you held your ear lobe over maybe the the door frame or or something else. It would maybe lay down on the edge of a table and let someone take take an owl and punch a hole in your ear. It wasn't for an earring. It was just a hole in your ear. And everyone that saw that hole in your ear knew that you had taken a vow to be the servant, the bond servant of, of this person. That's what Jesus was doing. And that's what Ezra is referring to. He said, we have committed ourselves to you. But then he's overwhelmed with the sin of the people. Look what's happening. The Word reveals sin. Listen to the four, four different ways he refers to He refers to guilt. He refers to iniquities. He refers to forsaking the commandments and and evil deeds. And then he weeps over the sin. Ezra chapter 10 and verse 1. He weeps over the sin. Thank you for your attention tonight. Let's ask God's blessing. Holy Father, we thank you so very much for this evening and the time that we have to hold in our hands your word and read from it and discuss it and and, and let it sink deeply into our hearts and into our thoughts. And thank you for the men that you've given us to read about, like Ezra and his faithfulness to you. Help us to identify sin in our lives. Help us, Father, to, to grieve over the sins that we have committed and, and to acknowledge them and to turn away from them. Bless us this evening in Jesus' name. Amen.